this construction project is truly out of this world. In the middle of a desert, and on top of a mountain, the largest optical telescope on Earth is being assembled. It's almost the height of Big Ben, and when complete, it'll produce images of faraway planets that are 15 times sharper than NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. This telescope will open the window towards part of our universe that today we don't even imagine. An incredible 16 nations have come together to build something that would otherwise have been impossible. But how do you construct an extremely large telescope in one of the most remote locations on Earth? And how much will this really advance our understanding of the universe? Space, the final frontier. Stretching for around a thousand kilometers along the Pacific coast of South America is Chile's Atacama Desert. It's the driest place on Earth outside of Antarctica. There are volcanoes, salt flats, and a whole lot of dust, features that kind of make it look like a scene from an alien planet. In fact, this is where the European Space Agency likes to test its Mars rovers. And it's here, 3,000 meters above sea level and 150 kilometers from the nearest city, that you'll find the site of an extraordinary project, one that's going to give humanity a better view of other worlds than we've ever had before. On this very spot, ESO, the European Southern Observatory, is building what they've cleverly called the Extremely Large Telescope, or ELT for short. Even with construction far from finished, you can easily see how it got that name. Because it's extremely large, and it needs to be to have enough space for the enormous mirror inside it. 39 meters long, it's four times bigger than ones found in the current largest telescopes of this kind. And it's actually just one of five mirrors that make up the whole thing, allowing it to gather 100 million times more light than the human eye. Without getting too technical, we're going to explain to you how that works a little bit later on. To give all of this high-tech kit protection from the elements, everything is being contained inside a giant steel dome covered in insulated cladding and weighing over 6,000 tonnes. Fitted with two enormous sliding doors that close during the day, the dome is 80 metres high and 93 metres in diameter. Underneath, 36 trolleys are attached to the circular concrete pier that the telescope sits on. They're what lets it turn by 360 degrees. So, how on earth did construction teams even begin to build something this complex in the middle of this barren landscape, hours away from any civilization? Well, before they could do any work at all, ESA had to find the perfect site. They looked at places in Spain, Morocco, and Argentina. So, why here? The very important and fundamental aspect was a location that could allow the fulfillment and the investigation of the scientific goal of the telescope. Roberto Tamai is program manager for the ELT project at ESO. It's one of the leading intergovernmental organizations in astronomy with 16 member states. According to Roberto, there were many factors involved in the decision to pick this particular mountain. The turbulence, uh, the content of water vapor, the content of wind, rain, Think about constructing such a built telescope in a location where 50% of the time you need to keep the door closed because it's raining. Other things to consider included ground conditions, altitude, whether there's any light pollution, and how clear and dark the skies are. The Atacama Desert ticked all the boxes. In 2010, after many months of testing and analyzing data from various sites, they agreed on a location. The peak of the Cerro Amazonas mountain. But there was a problem. Mountains tend to be a bit pointy, and the telescope needed a flat, level surface to build on. The solution? Off with his head! Cut the top off. To enable construction to start, the summit was flattened in 2014. That was done by drilling big holes, filling them with explosives, and lighting the fuse. Then, the rubble was swept away, and a road was put in so vehicles could actually reach the site. And yet, that was just the start of the preparations, and the problems were only just starting to emerge. Unfortunately, while digging, they, we realized that uh, 
half of the mountain at the central was with a lot of fractured rock and sand. And this, I'm sure you understand, this is not good to put foundation on sand. Partly because of this, it wasn't until 2019 that the foundations and the outline of the structure began to take shape. But the material of the surface was not the only issue. This is one of the world's most seismically active regions. In footage from 2022, one critical element of the design can be seen emerging from the dust. To stop the many fragile parts being damaged in an earthquake, the ELT rests on a concrete base that separates from the ground. In that gap in between, isolators have been fitted, which absorb lateral and vertical forces in the event of a quake. Now, before we continue with the construction, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever gazed up at the stars and longed for a career in astronomy, thinking it was light years away? Well, that might not be true. If you're looking to shoot for the moon and learn the skills required, then this week's video sponsor Brilliant has everything under the sun. Brilliant helps build critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. It offers thousands of interactive lessons in subjects like mathematics, data analysis, programming, and AI. But math is what you really need if you want a job studying the cosmos. Luckily, Brilliant has a range of courses for learners of all levels, from the fundamentals to more advanced concepts. And what's even better is you can learn on the go. Whether you're taking on a new topic or doing a quick refresh, you can level up in minutes if you're pressed for time. To try everything, Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash the B1M, scan the QR code on screen now, or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now, let's get back to that mountain in the desert. By 2023, it was time to start work on the Epic Dome. A structure made of steel segments weighing as much as 70 tons each. To get these massive chunks of metal up the mountain, they started off as individual steel beams that were then joined together at a base camp nearby. Next, they were put on the back of these remote controlled transporters which carried them up to the summit. There, the cranes took over, assembling the exterior like some kind of massive Lego set. As for how these massive bits of steel got to this area in the first place, well, a lot of the infrastructure was already in place. You see, just over 20 kilometers away from here is one of ESO's other stargazing sites, the Very Large Telescope, or VLT. Before that was built, the roads, utilities, and everything else you need to run a science facility had to be constructed first. That meant that when they came to build the ELT, all they had to do was extend those routes. It still wasn't easy, but it was a whole lot simpler than building it all from scratch. Now, at this point, we know what you're thinking. They've already built the very large telescope, and the extremely large telescope is now under construction. Surely it's only a matter of time before the ridiculously massive telescope, telescope endgame, or something like that comes along. While there's obviously a chance that a bigger one could be built at some point, right now the ELT is as large as things can get. And that's all to do with the mirrors. 39 meters is about as big as it's possible to go while remaining cost effective. And ESO knows all about that. They already tried to make one with a 100 meter mirror, but it had to be cancelled because it was too complex and too expensive. And we kid you not, it was called the Overwhelmingly Large Telescope. Nope, seriously, that's what they were calling it. Funny about overwhelmingly large telescope. What is a joke name, sir? Anyway, back to the extremely large telescope, and we're still in 2023, the year the project officially reached the halfway point. As well as the framework for the dome, the support cell, a large lattice structure that will eventually hold the main mirror, began coming together in sight. Like everything else with this project, it's absolutely massive. That right there is a person standing on just one tiny part of it. So now it's probably a good time to swing back and talk about those mirrors, which are nothing like the kind we all use on a daily basis. These ones are much bigger and more sophisticated, they have different shapes, sizes and rolls, and all combine seamlessly to make the telescope actually work. M1, the main mirror, is the biggest of the lot and consists of almost 800 hexagonal segments. Its job is to gather the light from space and then reflect it up onto the second mirror, M2, hanging above it. Light is then sent down to M3 before it goes back up to M4. This mirror can correct any distortions caused by atmospheric turbulence, and it does that by activating a set of powerful lasers. Begin laser ignition sequence. 
These are fired into the sky to make artificial guide stars for the telescope to see. They allow the ELT to measure blurring in the atmosphere, which can then be corrected by this mirror. That's called active optics, and it's already in use on the VLT. Now, if you're still with us at this point, then thank you and well done. After it's passed through M4, the light is directed through to M5. Here is where the image is stabilized before it reaches the various instruments for processing. But enough about mirrors. Now it's time for the really big question. What is ESO hoping to achieve with this device? Well, in short, it's something incredible. ELT will be the only telescope capable of taking direct images of rocky exoplanets outside our solar system, ones that might be able to sustain life. Right now, we're only able to see them indirectly, when a planet passes in front of a star, for example. But we will be able to understand if the atmosphere around those planets allows uh, the life as we know it. So there will be chlorophyll, there will be water, CO, CO2, pollution, if there is anybody that is making pollution as we are doing on our Earth. So it will be extremely powerful. Such a large light collecting area will also enable the telescope to look much deeper into the universe and help discover more about its origins. It'll help unpack the mysteries of dark matter and dark energy. One important thing to point out is that while the ELT will be huge, it won't be the biggest telescope overall. If you've seen GoldenEye, then you'll know that radio telescopes, which have a dish instead of mirrors, can be a lot larger. But they're different. Instead of visible light, they detect radio waves. In other words, they listen, whereas optical telescopes observe. Plus, the optical ones look a lot cooler, and they have lasers in them, for goodness sake. Lasers are becoming more and more a part of our daily lives. So, final question, how much is all this costing and who's paying for it? Well, the total is expected to come in around 1.6 billion US dollars. The funding has come from those 16 member states which have made various contributions depending on their size. Those member states are the government that are putting the money in the organization. And therefore, there are member states that are putting more money because they are bigger and member states that are putting less money because they are smaller. No single member state alone would have never been capable of putting so much funding, so much money for a scientific project. Splitting the bill like this doesn't just make sense financially. Those countries are also all going to benefit from the results of this project. After all, the discoveries that the ELT will make when it completes at the end of this decade could affect all of us. For centuries, we've been wondering whether we're truly alone in the universe. This might just give us the answer we've been waiting for. The extremely large telescope is an astronomical construction project in every sense. The scale is extraordinary, the location is breathtaking, and the scientific, technological and logistical challenges required to make it happen are simply astounding. When you consider the job it's going to be doing when it completes, there's no denying that this particular mega build really is in a world of its own. This video was sponsored by Brilliant. You can learn more about that at the link below. Don't forget that we're raising awareness of construction's mental health crisis and supporting charities in this space through our Get Construction Talking initiative. You can learn more, find links to support, or make a donation over at getconstructiontalking.org. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.